I was over at a friend's house the other night and they wanted me to take a look at an issue in their basement where a couple of their outlets weren't working and they couldn't figure it out. The circuit breaker wasn't tripped, but there was no power being provided and they wanted me to take a look. This home was brand new. It was little over one year old and is built by a reputable builder in our area. Well, when I took the faceplate off, one, I could see the actual failure point that was providing no power to the circuit. And additionally, there was four mistakes or four shortcuts taken by these professionals that I do not recommend even as a DIYer doing projects around my own house. So let's quickly run through these so you can avoid them on your own projects if you're taking on DIY electrical projects around your house safely and to code, but also if you're hiring out this type of work, you're not doing it yourself, but you do need to be an informed consumer to avoid these type of scenarios. And then we'll finish up. I will rewire this scenario. I'll show you the better components to use and techniques to use to get a more durable and longer lasting installation. So let's jump into it. I have a little mock-up here. This is exactly how the outlet was wired. It had three sets of 14 gauge Romex coming into the box and all being wired into a 15 amp residential grade outlet. And you can easily see our mistake number one, and that is any of these unused screw terminals. This is the hot side indicated by the gold screw terminal and the neutral side. You want to tighten those down. You do not want to leave those hanging out there where they can come in contact with a metal electrical box or a neutral or ground wire that might be floating inside your box. Now this is easy enough, right? You just have to tighten them down. It takes one second, but it does slow down the overall job. So sometimes you'll see this on job sites where they're trying to save a little bit on labor costs and they just leave those screw terminals hanging out there. This is not best practice and you definitely want to tighten these down. So then when you look at the profile, now we're flush and we don't have those screw terminals, especially the hot side hanging out there. When it comes to the second mistake, I wanna focus in on the actual method for wiring this outlet. You do have a few different options and I do not think they took the best path. So the method used to wire this was actually two different methods because they're bringing so many wires into one outlet. One, we had what's called side wiring where we do a clockwise J hook around the screw terminal. Now the clockwise J hook is correct and that is best practice and the most common way to wire an outlet. What I do not agree with, there's two kind of points here. This is called speed wiring or backstabbing. It's only available for residential grade outlets and only available when you use 14 gauge wire on a 15 amp circuit such as this application. I do not recommend backstabbing and many professionals do not recommend this. It's a one and done feature. You could put a small flathead screwdriver in here and release that wire, but that is it. You cannot use that feature again. And why I don't like that, if we look internally to what's going on, I actually have two wires here that are running into the speed wiring feature. And then you can see how they're being held. There's actually just one little tab here that presses against the wire when it comes into the housing. And that's it. It kind of bites into your copper. But once that tab is deflected, it's deflected. It's really not a very good spring where it could bounce back. And that's why if you press that tab out of the way, it releases that wire. But that is also why it's one and done because that tab would deflect and it would not be ideal to be used again. So mistake number two is using backstabbing to wire your outlet. Additionally, I said there was another point, and that is I prefer commercial grade outlet. This is my favorite Legrand. It's a 15 amp Legrand commercial grade outlet. You're gonna pay about $1.50 or $2 more as compared to your residential grade, but I think it's worth every penny. Now, overall commercial grade outlets are just built better. They're higher standards, better build quality, thicker gauge materials, but also they have this feature called back wiring. This is not backstabbing. It could look very similar where you put that wire straight in and you tighten down your screw terminal. But what this does, is it actually pulls a plate on the backside and it pinches down that wire internally. So it's not depending on any sort of lever arm pressing against it. But here on this commercial grade, you can see how that wire is pinched in the plate as we tighten down the screw terminal. 
and these are reusable, right? So if I needed to rewire, I'm doing some type of service, I can easily unscrew that, take the wire out, the wire is not damaged, can be reused, and I can use that back wiring feature again. So mistake number two, using back wiring, but I also would recommend using the commercial grade outlets over residential on any of your projects. Now the third mistake goes to kind of this jumbled up mess you see here, bringing all your wires into the outlet itself and kind of serving as a junction. Why I do not like this, one is this failure mode that we saw. We had a failure at the power coming in, which was actually on the screw terminal itself. Because we didn't have continuity on that power coming in, it knocked out the other two pieces of Romex that were going to other outlets downstream on the same circuit. So it takes everything out. One failure point at one outlet takes out the entire circuit. That does not have to happen if you use a technique called pigtailing. And let me demonstrate the other advantage of pigtailing by trying to get this type of configuration back into the electrical box. So you're gonna have to kind of fold those back in where you're actually trying to press this back into the box where you can thread in your mounting screws. So if you don't use pigtailing, you just run all the wires in. One, you're gonna have a hard time getting this outlet flush. You're gonna be having to push it all over the place so it's actually lined up flush once you put that face plate on. Two, it's gonna push wires all over the place. So if you made mistake number one and you did not secure down those unused screw terminals, you do have an opportunity of a short as a wire is pushed over in contact with that screw terminal. So there's just a better way. And let me show you how I would wire up a commercial grade outlet. So I'll strip down these three sets of Romex and the amount that I'm stripping off corresponds to my preferred wire connector. And that is a Wago 221 lever nut. I think these are superior to wire nuts and are ideal for DIYers or even professionals. So while I start to wire these up, don't forget below the video, you'll see a link to our Amazon store. I have all sorts of different sections broken out, but specifically the electrical section will show you a few options for Wago lever nuts. The 78 piece is the most common by far. And for that price, you get two wire, three wire, and five wire that will fit all of your different needs around the house. And one feature right here is you can actually see your wires and that they are firmly connected to the bus bar. Now here are the actual pigtails. So you can see I have one lever still open, that's where I'll connect the hot, the neutral, and the ground pigtail. And here's the big difference, right? So if something got knocked out on the outlet, if the outlet failed, we still have everything tied together at the Wago lever nut, so it won't take out our other outlets and won't affect the other parts of the circuit. And now I have three wires coming to my outlet. I can do a J hook here for my my one ground, which I'll connect first in a clockwise direction. And then as you saw, I'm just gonna go straight in because this is commercial grade and I'm using back wiring. Now with three wires, this will be much easier to get into the electrical box. And then mistake number four, which you probably already caught is why are we using 15 amp breakers and 14 gauge wire for our outlets? I highly recommend for your outlets to use 20 amp breakers and then the corresponding 12 gauge wire. This is just gonna set you up, give you a little bit more capacity and when you're running things like the space heater behind me, which this homeowner was in addition to a vacuum, those are two high current draw appliances. You want that extra capacity for convenience and just to avoid any issues. As always, let me know what you guys think down in the comments and I really do appreciate your feedback. Now, if that was a lot coming at you and you really aren't confident with your skills when it comes to doing your own electrical work around the house safely and to code, check out this video right here. And it really is an ultimate beginner's guide. I think it's a great place to start. We're gonna go through basic tools. We're gonna go through wiring, outlets, and give you some examples of different installations. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.